Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. A subscriber asked if I could recreate this effect using tie flow. Well, this may not necessarily be a practical or exciting effect, there is a little bit going on here. So, if you're new to tie flow, this will be an excellent lesson for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get right in here, go to create standard primitives, create a geosphere. I'm going to drag that out in the center and give it one segment. I'm going to create a teapot. I'm going to go over to helpers, create a tie icon. Reduce the size of it a little bit so it creates that initial pop. Then I'm going to go to create under geometry and create tie flow. And I'm going to go ahead and click on physics here and enable a few of these simulation groups. And I'm going to go ahead and enable these channels just in case. Birth objects. We need that geosphere. Select pick and pick the geosphere and then go ahead and turn the original one off. Drop in a force and set that to a positive value, let's say 1.2. Uh, give it a 0 0.08 Perlin noise. And go ahead and drop in a spin and change that spin rate to 45. Add a slow operator, increase that to about 15. I'm going to go ahead and add a physics shape, and I'm going to go ahead and add a particle groups and set that on simulation group one. That's good. So now I need to have the teapot spawn on these points around this geosphere. And to do that, I'm going to use a spawn operator. Drop this in right here. I'm going to choose on shape vertices, and the rest of this is good. I'm going to take a shape operator and drop it into a new event. Connect that to the spawn. And for shape, I'm going to remove this default. Select the teapot. Choose add selected. Now, if I just turn off the event two here and turn it back on, teapots will be where they should be. Drop in a rotation. And then for orientation, I'm going to choose parent align. And then here under the y axis, just change that value to 180. And then go ahead and drop a particle groups in here and change that to group two. And add a physics shape and a physics bind. Before I forget, I need to change the timing on this spawn to on event entry. So the addition of the new PhysX shapes is dragging them down. So I'm just going to select this force, hold shift and drag it over, drop it into this event. Okay, so that's the first part of this. Okay, so next I'm going to drag out a birth object into a new event. I'm going to spawn these particles on frame 1 with a total of 12. I'm go ahead and put those on group 3. Now I'm going to use a position icon and pick the tie icon. And select this shape operator and this physics shape. So I'm going to drag these over. I think probably this event should be given an evaluation priority of two. And I'm going to use a set target. I'm going to change it to from neighbors. Check prevent duplicate assignments and go into target filters and enable group two. And then down here under radius, you can increase this to 
a large enough number that we know it'll reach. So now I'm going to add a time test. I'm going to set it to 65 frames with a 40 frame variation. I'm going to send those into a new event where there's a find target operator. Where I'm going to control by time. I'm going to set the time to 35. And down at target location under point, I'm going to select particle target and then use the target channel. And then under target alignment, I'm going to select particle target. So now if I play this through, should have some movement. Might add a force and give this just a little bit of gravity. Okay, and now I'm going to drop a link target into a new event. And connect that to the find target. For timing, I'm going to choose continuous. And then let's say maybe a rotation. I'm going to select align to neighbors. And simulation group two. Probably change that timing to continuous. I could go in here under physics shape and come down to simulation groups and enable only collide with groups one and three. I could probably tweak this a little bit, maybe get these to line up a little bit more perfectly. Um, lower this radius down for the neighbors under this rotation. All right, just to go over everything I just did here, I spawned the geosphere using the birth objects, and then I placed it on group one, added the force and the spin and the slow operators to get the desired movement out of it, and then made it a physics shape so it could interact. And then to get the teapot particles to spawn on the points of the geosphere, I used a spawn operator and set that to on shape vertices with the timing of on event entry so that it didn't continue to spawn the particles. And in this event, they're placed on group two, given the shape of the teapot, and then the same force is applied with the rotation set to parent align so that the particles would line up appropriately on the geosphere. And then I made them physics shapes so that I could apply a physics bind to them and hold them in place on the geosphere while the animation plays out. And then for the, the fine target particles, I just spawn the 12 of them on frame one, assign them to group three, and give them their teapot shape and then used the position icon to have them spawn over here and made them a physics shape so they could interact with each other in the ground plane. And then I used a set target operator. And as the target I chose from neighbors and under target filters, I enabled simulation group two. So what I'm doing is I'm telling TIEFLOW to set targets for each of these particles, but only if the target is on simulation group two. So I could demonstrate here if you're unfamiliar with this operator, it's extremely useful. You can come down here and enable line to target, and then you can see that each one of these uh, teapots has a unique target. You can then with the time test, they're sent here with some gravity applied, and the gravity just keeps them down for a little bit while they're tracking towards their target. And then I used a find target operator with a control set to control by time, and under target location, for point, I chose particle target and use the target channel. And for target alignment, I also use particle target. And then once the particles find their target, they're sent into event five here where I apply a rotation. So this rotation is only going to align to neighbors that are on simulation group two, which are these. And I set that timing to continuous so it would constantly be updating. And lastly, I'm using a link to target operator with a timing of continuous to constantly update the rotation and position. So if I were to, let's say, uncheck position, we see our particles fall. 
if I were to change the timing to on event entry, they're not quite lined up as good as they should. It may be important to note that it's not necessary to set the timing to continuous on a link to target operator for the link to stay active. However, in this particular simulation, the link to target and the rotation are working together continuously to update the particles and keep them on their target. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. As always, if there was any part of this that you didn't quite understand or you're having trouble with, feel free to drop a comment below. And until next time, thanks again. See you.